All right, the fly that's up next in our heritage series is what's known now as Dell's Permit Fly, um, better known as Dell's Merkin. Um, and sort of a funny little story about the name of this fly. This is, uh, um, you know, probably the fly, at least uh, maybe these days it's changed with some of the new uh, new permit patterns, but uh, this fly's probably caught as many permit as anything else in the world, and likely more. Um, Del Brown was a, uh, a prolific permit angler, and uh, the guy who's sort of uh, everybody looked up to. He, uh, I don't know, had three hundred and some permit to his name uh, back in the back in the nineties, and uh, all of us were trying to get just one. Um, and this is the fly he came up with. And uh, the funny story about the name is, uh, um, it seems that a merkin, uh, which is what the uh, original name of this fly was is a pubic hair wig, and uh, back in the day when the prostitutes had uh, uh, had an STD, um, the authorities would come and shave them, and so they'd need a, uh, uh, a merkin to uh, stay in business, and that, uh, you'll see on the finish fly, that's sort of the, the overall shape of this fly. Um, so a little off color there, but that's the truth of the matter, and I'll let Uncle decide if this stays in or not. Um, but uh, that's that's where the name came from. It sounds like uh, somewhere along the line, Mrs. Del Brown got wind of that story and uh, did not approve and uh, made him change it to uh, to Dell's Permit Fly. So that's what you see in the catalogs these days. But when people talk about a Merkin, uh, this is the fly that they're talking about. Uh, so I'm going to tie this one on a size 2. And this is an 811S size 2. Um, and I'm going to use some dot Vivas in fluorescent green. Uh, 140 uh, denier UTC will work fine. Uh, good luck finding it these days. Um, but uh, Or Danville uh, uh, flat wax nylon. It was the original material. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my thread here behind the hook eye. And I'm going to dress the shank um, all the way from front to back. I'll come all the way back and I want to make sure I get a good solid anchor or base anchored here on the hook. Just a nice even layer of color. Just one turn right next to the other. Um, and one thing I always like to do is make sure that the hook eye is closed so I kind of build a little thread head there. And then just in behind the eyes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a pair of, uh, these are medium, medium sized plated lead eyes. Um, and you can obviously vary these, uh, the, the weight of these eyes, you know, for, for conditions. Um, but typically these were always tied pretty heavy. And I'm going to tie these in just using X wrap. So I'm going to start off with eight or 10 turns one way. And then I'll peel that eye back and go eight or 10 turns the other way. And what I'm trying to do here is cover this crossbar. I want to get that anchored down and keep everything nice and straight there. Just alternating back and forth. And then you could take some wraps that go between the eyes and the hook shank to kind of tighten those wraps up and then just continue along. I want to build up a nice solid base there. Finish off with more, a few more cross wraps underneath. And then I'll say that's pretty well anchored. And I want to kind of make sure that those are square on the hook. Um, and you can see those are right up at the hook. I didn't really bump those back at all. <clears throat> so now I'll move my thread back to the bend. And for the claws on this, um, any variety of uh, uh, Chinese cape, um, you know, just regular barnyard chicken, what they call a Chinese cape these days. Uh, I'm going to use a furnace colored one because that's what I had handy. If you've got something that's Cree or ginger, that works nicely as well. And I'm going to take four of these feathers. And what I want to do is, much like you do on a, a deceiver or, uh, you know, any feather wing streamer, I'm going to pair up two facing one way and two facing the other way. So what I'll do here, let me put these up where you can see them, is I'll kind of even their tips up and then I'll measure them. And what I'm looking for is maybe just a bit more than a shank length long. I'll trim those out. And then I'm gonna strip just a little bit at the bottom, you know, a quarter inch, maybe a little bit less than a quarter inch of bare stem there. I'll set those on my desk. You can see my others are just a little long yet. So I've done another set, and I'll even these up just on the edge of my desk so that they're opposed to each other. 
like you do the tail on a bass bug or, uh, uh, you know, like I say, a deceiver, any variety of, of split feather tails. So I'm going to cut all four of those stems even. And I'll bump this thread just up onto the straight part of the hook. And I'm going to tie these four across right up on top of the hook. And as I wrap back over them, I'm going to lift up on those feathers, and maybe even tilt them just slightly toward me to accommodate the thread torque. Just about back to the to the barb of the hook so that we've got a nice kind of split tail like that. Um, that went pretty smoothly. That looks like that, uh, that made that look like that always happens that easily. Um, and really, I mean, truthfully for me, it always does. I mean, I hardly ever have one come out of, out of square. Um, you know, I'm not surprised at all that that came out perfect. And uh, I hope you're not either. <laughs> Truth of the matter is, uh, you know, even odds that that was not going to come out right, but it came out right. So we'll just act like I knew that was going to happen. So I'm going to take two strands of pearl flashing and I'm going to loop them around my thread and catch those on top. And I'll wrap over those right back up to the base of the tail. Now, one thing along the way here, I want to try to keep this, this hook shank um, smooth and even. That green color is part of the fly. Um, and this flashaboo here, I'm going to trim just a bit proud of the, of the tail. Um, and I'll trim all four strands just sort of to, to different lengths um, so they're a little ragged. And now starting at the back here, we'll start building the body. Now, um, Aunt Lydia's sparkle yarn is what was originally used on this, and uh, uh, Wapsi sells it as uh, as sparkle yarn. Uh, but any variety of yarn will work. Um, uh, you know, even EP fibers will work. Um, but this is uh, this is sparkle yarn, and what I'm going to do is basically tie this in like spinner wings, and one right after the other, just working my way up the shank. So I'm going to start here at the back and put a couple turns, and then pull that in toward me, and get a couple turns. Kind of square that up on the hook, hopefully not mess up my tails too much. Get an X in there, and then just bump my thread forward just a little bit, and I'll put the next piece in. So the trick to doing this fly, um, luckily this is the hard part, and you get a lot of practice on each fly, so you get good at it pretty fast, is just tying this in like spinner wings. You can see I've just made X's in between each of those chunks of yarn, and you can alternate in a different color here and there. Um, you know, some merkins are tied just straight all tan. Some have these brown stripes. Um, you know, certainly any variety of crab colors. Um, one of the, the things that uh, I remember Simon Becker, a guide I used to fish with down in the Keys, uh, told me is, uh, you know, merkin doesn't, isn't the most realistic crab fly, but it acts like a crab. When it hits the water, it dives like a crab. Um, and indeed, you know, the first several permit I ever caught were caught on merkins. Um, so I have boxes, I still probably still do have boxes and boxes of this, uh, of this fly. And I still have a lot of confidence in it. Bonefish eat it pretty well. The permit, um, eat it as well as anything. I'm by, by no means an expert permit angler, but, uh, I've thrown at my share of them. I've caught a few of them. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, you know, if there's one thing I can say about permit is you can do everything exactly right 100% of the time and still not catch one. So if you haven't caught one yet and you've been trying, don't feel bad. Um, it'll happen eventually. And then you hear about some guy who went on his first trip and made his first cast and caught a 35 pounder too. So, um, you know, take that for what it's worth. So you can see I've just gone, you know, two tan, one brown, two tan, one brown. Um, looks like I've got exactly the right amount of yarn pieces here. And obviously I cut those all ahead of time just so I didn't have to fight with them. And I like to kind of jam these close together, try to keep these pieces of yarn as close together on the hook shank as you can, as you can get them. I think we could sneak this brown yarn. It's just a little bit thinner. I think I could sneak one more piece in here behind the eyes. And you can see how I'm switching, switching hands or switching the thread between hands as needed to get it lined up. And that's, that's the overall view that we're working for there. And I'll bring the thread under the eyes and up to the hook eye. And I'll whip finish the thread there. It's a nice clean whip finish. Come in and nick that thread out. Now the uh, idea of the Merkin originally was to trim it in the shape of a Colorado spinner blade, which is sort of an elongated oval. Um, and generally I would take my thumb and 
put it right on top and kind of trim around the edges. But that's going to be hard for you to see. Maybe. See if I can do this up here. So I'm going to put my thumb there and kind of keep it pretty well centered. I'm just going to trim around the edges and kind of taper down toward the lead eyes and cut most of that yarn off all at once. Like so. We did pretty good. And now I'll take my thumb and go on the other side and try to match that. Oh, that came out pretty good. Hopefully, hopefully that was up where you could see it. A lot of times when I'm doing that trimming, I'm doing it where I can see it and you can't see what I'm doing. So sort of a triangular taper around it at the end. And you know, back to, to the story of the Merkin, you can see that's about the shape of a Merkin you might see in the wild. So um, that's the tying process. And now we're going to put the legs on. Um, and there's some cool little tricks for the legs that... Uh, you know, I had a lot of these back in the day, and, and uh, it wasn't always uh, um, easy to figure out exactly how to get these legs on there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this hook and device upside down, and I'm going to work a strand of... Originally, this was square rubber legs. Very hard to find these days. So I'm just going to use medium round rubber, and I'm going to work it in between two of those strands so that I've wrapped around the hook. And then I'm going to tie an overhand knot. And what we ultimately want here is a square knot. So I'm going to tie an overhand knot and pull that down tight. And then I'm going to tie another to form a square knot. So the idea being here, and I wasn't paying attention when I did it the first time, the idea is that those turns go the opposite direction. Now it's going to unwind itself. Don't do it. Yep. All right, so let's try that again. So the second knot, the other end goes over the first end. And I know I'm making this look hard. It's really not near as hard as it seems. Like so, so that those legs stick out sideways. Um, so now I'm going to take another section of rubber legs. And ultimately, I'm going to end up with four of these. So I want to kind of keep these evenly spaced. Cinch that down. Tighten that one down. There we go. We're doing good. And we're going to do that two more times. So we take another section of leg. And you can see how I just kind of stretch that rubber tight and ideally don't pick up any of the yarn in it. So the near side went over the top there. And now the far side will come under. Oh, see that one was backwards. Um, so there's a great example of what you don't want is that leg offset. Now, if that happens, I'll just come in and trim that out of there and grab a new one. All this fancy, fancy tie-in and I screw up a square knot. All right, let me get our last leg here. Let me get a piece that's just a little straighter. Um, when you buy rubber legs, it comes folded in the in the bag. Um, and you want to kind of avoid the corners. It makes the legs sort of lay off at weird angles. All right, like so. So we've got four evenly spaced sets of legs there. And then the last little bit that you're going to do in the tying of this fly, and I do this before I trim the legs, is I'm going to take a red marker. And typically, I'll just grab all four, and I'm just going to go beyond the edge of the body and rub the marker down the, down the rubber leg. I'm going to make a red band on each of those. Same thing here on my near side. Get a hold of all of them. And then I can come in and I'm going to trim those legs just beyond that red, that red stripe. You can go in, hit them individually or shoot them all at 
as one bunch, like so. Touch our focus up there just a bit. Put them in my vise right side up again. And that is our Dell's Merkin. Now, one thing I usually do is I'll come in and sort of brush this yarn out just a bit, just to kind of fluff it up. Well, it kind of takes the, the weave out of the yarn. And yeah, probably not a bad idea to put a little shot of head cement on here. So I'll put some in there behind the eyes. Um, you can even run it down the center of the shank. Just make sure you let that dry completely ahead of time. And there's our uh, Dell's Merkin, uh, Dell's Permit Fly. Um, like I say, it doesn't look like uh, doesn't look like crabs. Certainly not the most realistic crab fly you've ever seen. Um, but I can vouch that this thing works, and this uh, sort of changed the world as far as permit fishing goes. Um, Dell was a guy that got to spend a lot of time doing it, and uh, you know this was his confidence pattern, and uh, you know be, therefore became everybody's confidence pattern. You know that guy had more more permit in the boat than anybody else had ever even seen. So um, pretty cool little fly, and uh, you know one that I just happened to be the right age to be uh, coming up as a saltwater guy um, back in the day. Um, Want to know everything about permit and finally go catch one. So um, that's Dell's Merkin, uh, Dell's Permit Fly. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. Hope you enjoyed that.